Uh, lecture site, we're particularly going to focus on what's happened in the last year and the last couple of months. In fact, this project has been around for a while. It spent quite a while in a, being a, quite an early experimental bleeding edge sort of project, and it's actually become a really cool production system. And so we're going to show you that. So I'm going to quite quickly hand over to Stuart, who's going to show you cool things, and then I have some slides that tell you in a little bit more detail about some of the changes that have happened. And the goal of our whole session is to make you two think that LectureSite is really cool and you could run it at your university. Uh, well, I'll go with this one because I, I do intend to walk around a little bit. Uh, so, um, like a really bad substitute teacher, I'm going to take over from a qualified person and then just show you all a video for seven minutes and talk over it. Um, so, uh, uh, for accreditation purposes first, this is Professor Nigel Ray, who's kindly agreed for me to show some of his real-life lecture material. So, I'm only going to show seven minutes of this uh, one-hour lecture, but it's to show you, um, you probably have never seen a lecture site recording before, so you don't really know what they're like or what to expect from them. But basically, uh, this is a, a, an off-the-shelf PTZ camera that's been turned into kind of a fully functioning robot. So, it's got a set of rules, which uh, Stephen's going to explain in a bit, but it's uh, automatically Track, tracking Nigel. So he's not wearing anything special that indicates him as a target. Um, and uh, this uh, recording is in itself not that special. We're making 1,330 recordings like this every uh, three months. Um, uh, Nigel didn't have to get in touch with anyone in my team to arrange this recording. He went to a website, he said he wanted a camera to follow him around, and then it automatically did this. And um, we regard these outcomes as quite successful. So we've had, um, of the people that have signed up to use our tracking cameras, um, of which we have uh, 30 currently, and we're going to have 40 by later this year, um, uh, we've uh, had about 44% of maths and 41% of physics. So if you are at a university with a lot of maths and physics, you may want to seriously consider this as an option and one of the things to note about lecture site kind of the important part is it's not so much what it tracks but also what it doesn't so down here that you can't see there's a whole audience moving around and fidgeting and it's not looking at them um, uh, also you'll notice that Nigel he gets a bit of uh, freedom of movement so he can he can walk around a little bit within this box and the camera won't fidget around and follow him it's going to stay still until he reaches the edge of the frame and then it's going to try and recenter on him so it's useful because if you have a camera that's locked onto a person all the time and they move around like this it gets kind of nauseating but it actually allows the camera to stop and pause on Nigel rather than it running all the time so um uh, we were running lecture site for kind of uh, an experiment for a long period of time. You know, it was in just one lecture theatre at Manchester for about four years, but we finally rolled it out to 30 classrooms. And um, academics are really pleased by the result. So we've got about 100 extra lectures being signed up to every week currently. And, uh, and this is a really good outcome for us because previously we just recorded the PowerPoint. And obviously for a lecture like that, the PowerPoint is completely irrelevant. So for us, for the first time, we're effectively recording maths and physics lectures. Uh, so I'll hand back to you after that quick demonstration. Great, thanks. Okay, apologies for the stretchy slides. Aspect ratio is the last frontier. Um, so lecture sites, who's, who's not heard of lecture site before? You all know about lecture site, that's fantastic. One or two people, okay. So basically, as Stuart mentioned, you use a, um, a PTZ camera. It's got a little webcam typically, which is an overview camera. Um, web lecture site does real-time analysis of the image. It identifies one or multiple presenters based on movement within the frame and then template matching, and then it positions the camera appropriately. So, um, some of what I'm going to talk about is really the, the story of running lecture site in production, and once you start to run it across multiple venues, what the important things are um, that help let you run it as a stable, mature production service. Um, and uh, this is quickly what we're doing with lecture site. We've got about 18 larger venues equipped with the cameras and the equipment. Between ourselves and Manchester, we're working almost exclusively with these Axis 5915 cameras that are particularly nice and well-suited and very affordable, and Logitech webcams, and you can also use IP cameras as overview cameras. 
So some of the difficulties that we've had is um, you can sometimes find that the little overview camera gets knocked out of position. In our lecture theatres, sometimes birds come and sit on them or something. And then suddenly your overview camera is not pointing where you expect, and so the tra tracking goes out. Uh, or they've been mounted like slightly off center, which can create difficulties. Um, the, the calibration is obviously sensitive, so the overview camera and the PTZ camera need to have the same idea of what they're pointing at, otherwise you point your camera in the wrong place. So there were some calibration questions. Um, issues of tracking where it might just go and point at like something presented that's not actually in the frame. We had some difficulties in sort of theater style lighting where people would switch off all the lights and you had a projector. We're still working on that one. And then a couple of issues around USB cameras and running them over long distances. Uh, and then there were some venues we had that were just sort of steep and deep enough that the camera actually needed to move up and down and do tilting as well as panning. Um, so, uh, late last year, we, when, particularly when Manchester got into gear, we had a sort of revival of the project in its development trajectory, and we now have two more committers. So, there are three committers on the project. Um, Rayleigh, Manchester, and ourselves are the, the active group. And Sir so James has been doing great work in bringing in all of the Manchester improvements, and we've got UCT improvements in. And we've had, like, the lecture site renaissance. So if you want to become a developer, we will review and merge your pull requests promptly. Um, it it's, uh, started to be time where we thought like the documentation was important because there were a whole load of historical experimental stuff. It was hard to find which configuration settings were actually valuable. So we have brand new documentation up, docslecturesite.org, using this very beautiful material design read, make docs theme. Uh, has got a very nice search thing as well. Um, nicer than the OpenCast one, in fact, we should change our theme. But the search one's very nice, you can put in like anything and it'll pull up all the matching pages and it's really fast. So for the first time, this really takes you through all the lecture site modules in a, we hope, easy to understand way and it's a sort of fairly complete reference guide. Um, we have an improved user interface, so it was sort of hard to figure out what was pointing at what and how to calibrate it properly before. And now you can see sort of the overlay of the overview camera and where the main camera thinks it is, and the camera boundaries, which is approximately the PTZ camera field of view in those blue ones. And you can put this side to side with an actual real live cam preview of your PTZ camera and very quickly establish if your calibration is correct, for example, or see what the movements are like. Um, this pan and tilt operator, so Lectricide used to be pan only, and Manchester added the, the tilt stuff, and I think you've got the switched on in a couple of venues. We don't have a demo video of that yet, yet though. Um, this was a big one for us, partly when we started looking at the um, tilting stuff, was to get accurate calibration or more accurate calibration. So. It was a little bit fiddly because you had to go and figure out particular numbers that indicated the left and right in your frame and the top and bottom, and if you got the numbers wrong, then the calibration wasn't what you expected and it pointed at the wrong place. Um, but there also are subtle things that happen because you've got an overview camera with a lens that is sort of different to the you know, coordinate system of your PTZ camera, and you can get distortions from the width of view and that sort of thing. So we wanted to solve a couple of problems here. One was just to make it much easier, and the second one to be more accurate around calibration. And this is the first pass attempt at doing this, and it's basically as easy as picking between three and five points on your overview image that are specific identifiable points in the venue. So you can see there's one on the logo on the lectern and a light fitting on the wall and all of that that sort of span the width of it. And then the Axis web interface um, makes it really easy to go and just set presets on the same points because you literally just look at the same point in the Axis image and click the crosshairs and it will go and move the camera there and then you give it a named preset. So you match up your presets on, on LectureSite with the set of presets on your camera and LectureSite then goes and figures out the correlation between those. Um, and it's more accurate in some ways because previously we just do a sort of a linear mapping between the two edge points. And if you have a camera, an overview camera that's not mounted exactly on your camera, for example, or you have some lens distortion effects, 
you can actually see here that the calibration plotted is sort of a curve and it's different on the left and the right and that represents a, like an offset of the, the camera. Um, and that really just all translates into more accurate positioning when LectureSight is moving the, the camera, so more accurate frame control. Um, we spent a little bit of time looking at making LectureSight not be distractible. So if you have a presenter who's moved around the venue, that's the person you want to follow. You don't want a very short-term object to come up and the camera to move off. And sometimes those short-term, short-lived objects can be a student walking through the front of the field of view or it can even be an encoding artifact or something that changes on a screen. And basically, you just don't want the camera to move because too much movement is also a bad thing. Um, we've added some metrics, so you can actually see counts of what LectureSight has done during the sessions and some histograms. So how many times has it acquired a new target, for example? And the goal of, of this is to have a way to understand when a LectureSight session has done reasonable tracking and performance during a session, or if it's gone haywire, for example, for some reason. So if you saw a very high number of target reacquisitions, then there might be something going on like the lighting is so poor that it can't consistently identify a target or something like that. Equally, if you saw a zero new target acquisitions, you probably recorded an empty venue, and you could use that to drop your um, recording automatically. Uh, we have a Galacaster plugin, so if you um, start and stop a manual recording, for example, it can start and stop lecture site from tracking, and it can attach those metrics into the media package. Uh, and then we have a dashboard, which we um, built quite quickly. Everyone likes building dashboards. <laughs> this is a really, really simple one. We wanted specifically the overview camera images, so not the actual PTZ camera image, but we wanted to know that the overview cameras were still, broadly speaking, positioned correctly and looking at the right things. So LectureSight will push up the overview image to a dashboard, and this dashboard will, it's a very simple application. It will display all of them, and it will also put your calibration markers on it. So visually, you can very quickly look across your 20 venues. Are your overview cameras still all there? They're still giving an image, and you've got your calibration markers are still aligned. And if your camera was bumped or something else happened, or you would be able to see that very quickly. Uh, and that's it. Those are the key URLs, docslecturesite.org, to get started. It does have links to everything else. Um, <clears throat> those last two are UCT code that's not yet in the sort of core thing, but you can go and grab them, run them, it's open source if you want. Um, and there's a mailing list as well, and I think there's some links to that on the documentation side. So that's it from LectureSite. Any questions? I'll take that to mean you're all just very excited yes, at the back. Shall I, uh, I render them up? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I have an annotation. Um, uh, a student of us is writing a, a bachelor thesis uh, to uh, enhance the lecture site with additional uh, markers for the. Uh, um, for the teacher, um, so um, it should be a cheap system that is uh, mounted on, on our microphones um, and uh, should uh, reach that the, the uh, um, teacher is always in, in the picture and the, the problem is fixed that a student is walking through the, the, uh, the, through the recording and, and uh, it follows up to the, to the student. So um, after the thesis is done, we will contribute this to lecture site. Fantastic, that's very good to hear. Um, and also lecture site's very modular, so it can also make a good project for students and they don't have to focus on the whole thing, they can pick one particular aspect of it, like improving tracking or improving camera movement or something else like that. Yes, Paul. Uh, 
So it started out requiring GPUs, so, um, uh, but with advances in hardware, because this project's been going on so long, um, we're now able to do that processing on the CPU. So um, uh, we're doing the image analysis on the GPU component that's baked into like an i7, something like that. Um, uh, so I think that's the only specific hardware requirement in the box. Then obviously on the camera side, you need a, a pan tilt zoom camera, and we've basically stuck with Axis to make life easier. We started out using Visca cameras, and they were a real pain in the ass. Um, and then we used just a standard webcam, although we're moving away from them to use another Axis um, uh, uh, over Ethernet camera so that it can zoom in and we can have more pixels at the front to analyze. Um, so I think that GPU story as well, that modern motherboards are coming with built-in GPUs, like the Intel Skylake stuff onwards that are, um, have the right specs and dimensions for running lecture site. I think there are a little bit of like complexities around kernel versions and drivers and that sort of thing. Maybe Andy's got the picture there. Yeah, you have to roll over a kernel with OPCL, uh, to kind of high level. Uh, and there's no, that's kind of a bit restricted at the moment. I'm on the specific kernel and there's no way about it for now. So. Okay. So if you stick an NVIDIA GPU into your machine, you're basically good to go. If you're a little bit more adventurous, you can use a Intel Skylake Plus with some tweaking. Okay, okay. does that wrap up lecture site? Cool.